Welcome back everybody. In this video I'm going to show you as quick as I can how you can make simple music for your Game Boy game. So that little snippet of music took me maybe an hour most. I simply implemented it by just having a play track um, at the start of the game and then the music plays throughout. And that's that will work for you guys too if you don't have any other um, music tracks during your game that you use for sound effects. Uh, otherwise, uh, this won't be as easy for you to implement into your games. Uh, and the reason why I'm, uh, you know, teaching you how to do this quick and easy is because for the uh, game jams and competitions, um, often you don't have much time. Normally you are rated on the music, so if you weren't to add any music, you would get a zero in that category, which is not great. So to start, I'm using OpenMPT, which is a free software uh, that lets you make chiptune uh, tracker-based music. And this is one of the software that the GB Studio docs suggest you use. Before we begin, if you haven't read the GB Studio docs on music, then I highly recommend you do. Um, this has all of the information that I'm going to be telling you and some things that you really need to get a grip of is the channels. There's only allowed four channels and the note ranges is from C3 to B8 and the, the fourth channel is only for noise which is like the percussion tracks um, and it also tells you which instruments you can use and I'll run through what that means in a second. So what we're going to do first instead of um, creating a new file we're going to open up a file of the template from our from our game. So what you need to do is actually go into the uh, assets folder of your project and go into the music file and as you can see I've already made the track but what we're going to do is take the template and this should be in every single project you make. It should be already a template in there and if you're using the sample project then there'll be other music here as well just like here. Uh, and so what we're going to do is open it up and it should open it up as we expect and now we can see this stuff. This doesn't make much sense and arguably you don't want to touch this stuff. Um, what, what we're going to do is click on patterns at the top here and then this is a tracker. This is what we see as the music uh, and as you can see there's there's notes here, there's a value next to it and then there's another value that in green. Uh, the notes obviously you know from A to um, G the number next to it is the instrument, which we uh, looked at before, and then the green is the effect, and in this case, this is the volume. So C is the volume, and then uh, if you look in the docs, it will tell you what each volume is, and I think 40 is the maximum, and 0 is the is silent. Uh, this thing here is the speed, so you would want one of these. You, probably, you definitely want one of these in your music. This is the the BPM basically. Um, obviously it's not 5 BPM but if you look in the documents it tells you what the 5 means. Um, and basically you can see here as well we have each one of these. This is basically like a a verse or whatever you know your sections of your song. Um, and the numbers here are you know from 0 to 64 or, or 63 meaning there's 64 beats you could say. Uh, and if we were to press play it would um, do the music. So as you can see, uh, these tracks are silent, and the uh, and these were playing um, a a melody, and that's basically how it goes, right? So first things first, we don't want this. This is someone else's song. This is obviously a template um, that, if we were to use, it would mean that we. Um, we're using someone else's work and I think we're allowed to use it but for the competition it isn't very uh, professional or arguably if somebody recognized it as the template song it wouldn't be you wouldn't get a good score right so to start making something very simple we're going to start using this website which is called chord player uh, or one motion chord player I've made a video about this before but I'll try and make this even simpler and straight to the point of uh, what we want to actually get from this. So we just want a four chord sequence. We want it to sound nice. You can obviously change the scale here or the uh, the key it's in. I'm just going to keep it in C major just because that is um, the simplest key. Uh, and you can see here if we press these, um, these notes it will play chords. 
and obviously you can change how it sounds, but it doesn't affect you. This isn't what we're bringing into uh, the tracker. We are just bringing the notes into the tracker from this. Okay. So the idea is we create our port chord, chord progression, and then we export the MIDI into um, the open MPT, and then we turn that into our song. So we're going to record some uh, chords here. So I pressed record, and now we can press the chords we want. As you can see, it's added them here. It doesn't matter how long you hold them down for. The idea is that uh, the style here is what changes, you know, how it's played. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could add a melody over the top and record that. But what I'm just going to do is press that button there and press export MIDI file. And then I'm just going to press OK. And obviously, I'm going to then save it. And now it's downloaded. We can go back into the tracker. So now we're here. Um, I actually remembered something. As soon as you open this file, we should save as um, because we don't want to overwrite this template. We want to we want to use the template if we make another music. So I'll call this tutorial track and save that. And now this this exact thing is in the GB Studio. Uh, project files. Okay, so this song you can already press play in in GB Studio and it will play what we have here. And obviously, it's just the template. So what we want to do now is press open. And obviously, now we're in our uh, files and we want to go to the downloads. And then this is what we just saved. So open, and it's saying it was last saved in a MIDI file. Are you sure? And then we say yes. And we go to the patterns again. And as you can see here, we now have the four chords. They are spread out, and I'm just going to move them around by just uh, dragging them up here. So they're all in a similar place. These effects here, I think they're just cutoffs, um, and they don't really matter to us. So we have our four chords here now, so we can now do with these as we wish. Uh, and if you're not very musically inclined, all you really need is four chords and each of them having four notes is very nice um, and in the track i made um, for the space crawler game all i did was copy these and then i deleted everything from here and then i i used the bass note which if we go back to um we go back to this we can, we can, if we mute these, if, if we click on these here, it mutes the track. So if we press play, that was a deep note. And if we mute that and unmute this, then that's a high note. This one is a lower note. And then this one is uh, just up from the octave, I think. So this is the lowest note. Then it's this, then this, and then this is the highest note. So with that in mind, let's go back to our tutorial track. And I'm just going to slap in some chords. So we obviously want our C chord. So I'm going to make these very short to begin with. And then we can duplicate them around and uh, increase their length. OK, so I've put the bass notes at here. And one thing you might remember is that the lowest note we can have is C3. So by clicking on it and then pressing a, the free number on your keyboard, it will put the the note from a uh, 2 to a 3. And that's the lowest note you can have in GB Studio, um, or on a Game Boy, I guess, uh, is the C3. Uh, so it goes from C3 all the way up to B8, I think. Um, so with that in mind, we can now uh, use these notes here to make an arpeggio. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an arpeggio. So I'm going to first copy this note. And if you know what an arpeggio is, it just basically means you go through the notes. Um, you can do it in different orders, but I'm going to do it from low to high. And it will obviously sound a bit spacey, you know, like um, um, beeping uh, machinery or something, the way it like goes. Um, and that's basically what the intention is. Uh, and then once I've put all these uh, notes in, I'm going to make sure that they're in the correct um they're in the correct octave. So what I'm making sure is that we start with the lowest note and then we 
go up through the from the next lowest to the highest at the end. Just copy and pasting. And you might be wondering why I'm not just um, you know doing a note with four notes across this, and that is because this doesn't play melodic notes like we can with this. Um, this is for percussion, uh, where the instruments are used for um, like drums and stuff. So now we have our notes here. We can't simply just press play, unfortunately. Uh, it would be silent, but if you listen now, that does have a sound because we've set the the volume and we've also set the instrument. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set the instrument and you only have to set the instrument actually at the start. You don't have to keep changing it for every note you play. And that's the same with the um, the volume. But the difference with the volume is um, the, the volume is what uh, controls whether or not the note is playing or not. So if we put C0 at the very end, it will mean that the, the sound is cut off once we get to here. Uh, and I think I will just move this out of the way for now. Let's hear what this sounds like. And that is something. We are onto something there. Uh, and uh, from this point, I, uh, I'm pretty confident with how this is going, so I'm just going to drag this out to um, to the 16. And obviously, I have some knowledge of music, so I'm putting everything on the 16th note. Um, I'm just going to delete all this because uh, we've used all the notes and we have them ready. Um, and then what I'm going to do is going to get rid of this end piece. And I'm now going to copy this little arpeggio we made and duplicate it four times. And this is as if we're filling the bar with with a melody. So make sure we get all of them and paste them in between. And now when we do this, when you press play, it, it will loop this section. So we just have to press play and see what it sounds like. Fantastic. So we have something, but we also might want to consider making it um, a little higher, uh, mainly because I, if everything's the same pitch, like for example, these are both C3, they kind of, they're not, they're not doing any extra work. They might as well not even be there. So I'm going to put this up to C4, this up to five, this up to six. Um, I'm basically just putting everything up a single octave. Okay. So now all of the melodic parts up to one octave. Let's see how it sounds. Fantastic. So we now have a we have a bass line basically, and also um, an arpeggiated melody. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the speed. So I already know that I want zero eight. Um, that's what I did for the other song I made. Um, but if you like, the faster it is obviously the faster your song gets to the end. Um, so if you don't want to do much work and you want to keep it simple and not overcomplicate it for yourself, I'd keep the speed slow. And I think the higher the number, the slower it is. If I, if I do 0, 8, then change it to... Actually, I'll put it on 0, 5 first. That's the uh, basic. That's 150 beats per minute. It might be the same as what we just heard. Okay, so that's faster than before, but it's still good. And if we put it to 0, 8, let's see what happens. And you see that completely changes the uh, the feel of the song. It um, the longer the chords go on for, and the more melo uh, the more of the arpeggiated melody you hear, you um, it kind of slows it down, and it kind of uh, you kind of linger on the notes more, which uh, means you have to do less work. Uh, which some people could call me lazy, other people could call me smart. It's up to you, right? So um, from this point, you can you can start being creative, right? If we uh, copy this first section and then bring it into the next sections uh, and you can create and delete sections by right clicking and pressing remove 
uh, or paste if you copy, you know, and you can insert and remove whatever uh, and have it as long as you want. But you, you want to remove the things you don't need so that the song doesn't have silence in it uh, when you're in the game. So I'm just going to paste this between the, these sections. Um, and if you notice here, we have the drums, right? So I'm just going to take these drums and I'm going to play them to my melody and see how it sounds. So I'll delete their third channel thing. Um, we don't have anything of ours in it and it will be our key. And let's press play. And then when we press play, we're going to untick loop pattern and it will move through the patterns. Okay, so the drum beat is useful. It um, you know adds some extra flavor to the song. The C, this uh, V64 value is actually referring to the volume. Um, and obviously, if we delete it, then it doesn't let us. And it's because the effect is taking charge, and you know how the the volume is normally here. Um, yeah, this this bit's taking charge, and I'm not exactly sure why or how this works, but this is just to get you down to the you know, get you to the basics. So what this means here is we're playing a B4 note, which I don't understand why, because I'm pretty sure the documents say you can only play a C5. So I'm going to change it to a C5. And I'm just pressing the A, a key on my keyboard, because uh, your keyboard is a keyboard with it. Um, so, so we've got the note, which has to be C5, and then the instrument. So if you look in the documents, it is here. So from 16 to 31 is the um, is the percussion noises, and it tells you what it is, but you have to listen to it. And there actually is a difference between what it sounds like in the tracker and what it sounds like in GB Studio. So I recommend making it very simply first, and then listening to it in GB Studio and changing it based on what you hear. So that is using the stutter and the glitch, which is like a snare and or yeah, it's trying to be a snare and a hi-hat, I guess. So if we go back in, I what I did for my other one, I just is I went. Um, I'm gonna actually leave this version first, and then in the next section, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some extra flavor to uh, add some extra stuff into the music. To the more beats you add, the uh, faster the music feels. Um, so let's see where, how that affects it. So if we press play here, Okay, so obviously having it different than this section doesn't make it feel like a more interesting song, but it's still not that interesting. Um, and there are so many things you can do with these sounds, um, and all it takes is experimenting. But to make it simply, you just have a, you know, like a kick and then a cymbal or a snare, doom, k, boom, k, right? It's very simple. And that's how you make the drums. Uh, and then in the final section, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to change this value to something like, well, it has to be between an 8 and a 15, so maybe I'll choose a 14. I'm going to reduce the volume on the first one, and I'm going to cut the drums off on the last part. And hopefully this makes a satisfying piece of music.
so once the music came back to the start, you heard that uh, because it looped and we hadn't silenced it, it continued the last note that it played, which actually gave me an idea of how we can improve the song. So I might actually um, do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to paste it into the second one or into section two. Obviously, section zero is section one and section two is technically section three. Um, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. And what this should do is create a more full um, chord. It, that's my hope anyway. Um, I may have to up this to a... Let's actually see what it ended on. A six. So let's try it on a five. No, let's try on a six. So I'm changing these to sixes. And I'm hoping it will create a more full chord, but that's we just have to try it out. Okay, so. Um, I found that a bit annoying, so I'm going to increase the melody again and decrease this. And hopefully it just serves as a backup rather than a full-fledged uh, melody because, or like lead. Because uh, obviously it can be quite grating if you have the same high note piercing your ears, especially when it's like a scratchy noise. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there. All we have to do is press save, that save icon there. And I could close this right now, but what I'm going to do is go into GB Studio. I'm going to change the song that plays to um, the tutorial track. And we can obviously test it here by pressing this. But that won't sound exactly like it does in the game, so I'll press play. And so with that, I've, uh, I think I should have taught you guys how to make a simple track in OpenMPT. This should work with your other softwares as well, as long as they can support holding the MIDI files. The only reason this works for me is because I can open up the MIDI file I got from One Motion Chord Player in this, and then just copy the notes and paste them into my track, right? So if you can't do that, um, then I maybe suggest um, trying OpenMPT. Um, uh, hopefully this has given you enough of the information you need to get started. Um, there are, I think there are tutorials online of how to use this. I used that uh, when I was learning how to do this. Um, but it won't be exhaustive because most of the rules are here in the GB Studio docs. Okay. Um, so keep that in mind when you're creating, and like I did, try and be creative when you, something works that, um, when something goes wrong, it often leads to something, this a happy accident, Bob Ross would say. Um, so maybe try and do some happy accidents and, uh, try and have some fun. And if you don't have enough time, then definitely just, you know, jump in this, put some chords down, um, you know, change some volumes to make sure that they're not too overwhelming or underwhelming. Um, and uh, just place the uh, things around. So, so yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, my patrons will be up on the screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. Remember to like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment if you uh, if you found this useful. And if you would like me to make another video like this in the future, I'm planning on doing another one this week uh, where I talk more about the certain uh, instruments and some of the. Uh, maybe more musical stuff like changing the volumes and yeah just a just a more in-depth video and uh yeah so let me know if you'd like to see that and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching